Okay, so I'll just give a quick introduction. So my name is Devin Lloyd and I work for Erica. So my current role at Erica is actually the Environmental Farm Plan Programs Manager. But uh, when I was helping this project, I had a different role, which was the Environmental Stewardship Coordinator. Um, so I recently switched roles in January. Um, then today we're also, we also have Alan Hall. Um, Alan, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I sure can. Uh, Alan here, I'm the exec director with Erica and uh, we have a number of uh, individual uh, forage and applied research associations around the province that have been involved in, in this particular project. Uh, uh, each are independent groups. Uh, back to you, Devin. Perfect. Thanks, Alan. Okay, so for those of you who do not know uh, ERICA, it stands for the Agricultural Research and Extension Council of Alberta. So we are a not-for-profit organization and we, we work with uh, producers. So as Alan said, we are made up of seven member associations throughout the province. So our member associations currently are Battle River Research Group, which is located out of Forestburg, Foothills Forage and Grazing, Grazing Association, which is out of High River, and then we also have Gateway Research Organization out of Westlock, Grey Wooded Forage Association out of Rocky Mountain House, Lakeland Agricultural Research Association out of Bonneville, Mackenzie Applied Research Association out of Fort Vermillion, and North Peace Applied Research Association out of Manning. So the roles of the associations is to focus on applied, uh, they focus on applied research and the forage industry. They deliver programs and develop projects that uh, address the concerns and the priorities of producers in their specific regions. Alan, do you want to talk a little bit more about the roles of the associations within Erica? Uh, yes, Erica is a membership-based organization, and, and and so one of the one of the things that Erica does with the associations is trying to. Uh, secure larger programs, uh, be they provincial in nature, be they part of a federal program like the CFGA program. Uh, we also uh, do a bit of work with the associations to help them secure financing. The associations basically play a dual role uh, and it varies by individual group. Uh, some uh, perform both an applied research function and an extension function. Others are primarily an extension focus. Uh, uh, the, the sort of the, the webinar, the, the farm tours, all of those kinds of things. And uh, each are run with independent boards of directors, each uh, serve a geographic area within the province. And uh, more often than not are joined forces on, on various projects that are of mutual interest. Back to you, Devin. All right, thanks, Alan. Okay, so as, uh... As previously said, we do have seven member associations. So these member associations for this uh, for this project, they provided sites to sample for 2020 and then the previous year's data. So out of our seven member associations, one of them were not able to provide site data from 2019 as with their previous uh, project, they did not have any pasture sites or grassland samples. Um, so they only did cropland. So for 2009 data, we only had six sites. And then our, um, so our member associations also helped a lot with creating project awareness. So they have sent out multiple resources to their producers, their member producers, and through their newsletters and stuff like that. So one of the things that they sent out was a two-pager. Um, from Varesco Solutions. So that was on soil health, soil organic carbon, the carbon market, climate change, um, can the Canada grassland protocol. We also sent out, or the associations also sent out the avoided conversion of grassland pilot fact sheet. Um, and then some of the associations were also able to promote the project with short articles in their newsletters. So this is just a site picture from the foothills, from our foothills site. Um, so that day was also bring your dog to work today. Okay, so Erica's role in this project. Um, so we did the sampling for the 2020 data. 
So we were actually only able to sample five out of the seven sites this fall due to uh, COVID and the ground freezing. So I was actually doing the sampling for this, um, but had to stop due to COVID. And then by the time I was able to come back, the ground was frozen. So we were only actually able to get five sites, which was kind of a bummer, but oh well. So out of these sites, so the 2019 sites and the 2020 sites, are the same, so I tried to sample in the exact same exact same place. Um, but some of the management practices included within these sites were so there are lots of rotational grazing, so some with offsite watering systems to promote um, healthier water bodies, native pasture systems. Um, yeah, native pasture that is grazed in a cell system, bale grazing, rotational grazing using high intensity stocking rates. And then in 2019 and 2020, the, both of the years were sampled using the Kara Soil Health Lab in Oyen, Alberta. So the samples were used, samples were um, analyzed using the benchmark package, which includes your active and total fungi, active and total bacteria, uh, nematode functional groups, soil texture, active carbon, wet aggregate, stability, soil respiration, total carbon nitrogen ratios. And I think that's it if I remember correctly. So we, uh, us at Erica also completed the eligibility assessments with the producers throughout the project and then also did uh, project evaluations. And then any producers that are interested in participating in this uh, new upcoming project. Um, they have been getting a hold of us at Erica. So what we've been doing is just providing them with some further information. And then I've been passing on their information to CFGA. So this picture is just a site that was sampled out by coronation. And now just our quick little update. So like I said, we only had five sites. So there wasn't wasn't too much to go off of, um, but Alan, do you want to add anything? Yeah, I'll maybe add that we had a, a, a second project that was on the go uh, that involved about 50 uh, cattlemen from around the province. Uh, we called it the carbon pasture, but it was a similar type of work. And so soil samples and the, the management practices of the last decade, et cetera, et cetera, have all been kind of pulled together. We're just in that process. And I, I guess I just would like to leave with the group that the combination of the work we've done with CFGA and the work on this other project uh, and some other work that the associations have been doing is setting a great base here in the province in terms of producer engagement around the province uh, as we move forward. So we, we've got that base to work from. We've got some benchmarking done and uh, looking forward to the journey over the coming year, for a couple of years, three years, five years. It's, it's not an overnight thing. Perfect. Thank you, Alan. Okay, thanks for that, Devin. And thanks for all your, your hard work this summer. I know kind of a little bit late out of the gate on, on some of the Alberta work, but uh, I know you worked hard throughout the summer. And was it the last fall that you called and one of the sites was, was frozen? Or maybe it was this year. Yeah, it was last fall that it was frozen yeah. solid. <laughs> uh, Devin, <laughs> Devin, yes. although it wasn't part of the project, you want to mention the two videos that you, that you had some involvement getting ready? Yeah, so um, with that uh, carbon sequestration project that Alan was just was just talking about, so that was the uh, that was another one of our Erica projects, and it was the carbon sequestration on rangeland in Alberta, is what the title of the project was, and part of that, well, the majority of that project was just based on on extension and awareness, so. Uh, we ended up, Erica ended up making two um, producer-based based videos. One's around six minutes, and I think the other one's around eight minutes long on carbon sequestration. So the one is explaining soil carbon, carbon sequestration, soil health, stuff like that. And then the other one is kind of more of a producer's perspective. So different management practices that producers are doing and why they think they're important and helping their, their soil health and structure and uh, carbon soil carbon and stuff like that. So those uh, videos are actually available on the Erica website. Um, 
I can put that in the link if anyone is interested in watching those videos. That would be great. Uh, a special thank you to Doug Ray, who kind of helped with some of this. So those of some of you would know Doug. Yeah. 